Thank you for attending uh, Toronto Fire Services and Toronto Medic Paramedic Services Headquarters to, uh, today for this uh, news information. And we'll have uh, three speakers today. The first will be uh, Councillor Raymond Cho, next will be Fire Chief Jim Sales, and then uh, the President and Chief Executive Officer with Toronto Community Housing, Greg Spearn. And uh, also we have on hand Deputy Jessup, if anyone has any questions related to uh, fire prevention after um, um, our speakers give an update on uh, the situation. So first we'll invite up uh, Councillor Raymond Cho. Councillor? Good morning, everyone. Yeah, as introduced, my name is Raymond Cho. Uh, I'm the local councillor of uh, the seniors building the fire, the tragic fire happened. And uh, I'm also one of the board members of Toronto Community Housing. It's really unfortunate, but before we start press conference, I'd like to have uh, all of us have a moment of silence to remember the seniors who lost their lives. Thank you. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that the uh, three seniors from the 1315 uh, Nielsen Road Seniors Building, Toronto uh, Community Cooperation uh, Housing Unit, that they lost their lives. And uh, uh, I understand that the firefighters and the Toronto Community Housing, they're working uh, very cooperatively, very diligently so that this kind of extension should never ever happen in our uh, seniors building, in any buildings. And uh, I understand that's why uh, we're calling this a conference. Uh, among this uh, sad news, uh, I'd like to share one good news. And uh, the one person, uh, she, her name is, everybody knows by now, uh, Fazila Khan, and she was a caregiver and uh, she was placed uh, in ICU, intensive care unit, uh, right after the fire occurred. So she was working at the time on the fifth floor. And I went to see her about three, four times. I've been talking to her family almost every day. And the good news is uh, she got transferred from ICU to the regular uh, hospital units. And uh, as of last night, she got uh, uh, transferred to the rehab. And I spoke to her. She was so thankful. She was so happy. And uh, that's good news. Now, uh, we already had one funeral service for the senior, one senior. And the couple of seniors, their body, they were uh, at the St. Michael's Hospital, but they were released. So I understand that there will be viewing on Sunday and the funeral service coming Monday. And uh, I'd like to thank all the media coming to this uh, very important, serious press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Cho. And now we invite up uh, Fire Chief Jim Sales. Good afternoon. I want to go over the events. Toronto Fire Service responded to a report of a fire from a fire uh, alarm monitoring company at 1315 Nielsen Road, Friday the 5th, 2016, at 1503.46 exactly p.m. In spite of the efforts of Toronto Fire staff, three occupants lost their lives and several others were injured and transported to hospital with critical injuries. On behalf of Toronto Fire Services, I'd like to extend our sincerest condolences to those who lost a loved one on that day and our best wishes for those that are recovering. Toronto Fire Prevention staff attended the scene to work with the Office of the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management, Toronto Police, the Coroner's Office to assist in determining the origin, cause and circumstance of the fire. Toronto Fire Prevention staff conducted a post-fire inspection pursuant to the delegated authority under the Fire Protection and Prevention Act. Toronto Fire Prevention staff 
received full cooperation from the owner of the building during the post-fire inspection. Toronto Fire Prevention staff also, after following careful review of all evidence, have sworn an information in Provincial Offences Court against the owner of the building for the following violation of the Ontario Fire Code under 24112. Combustible materials shall not be accumulated in any part of a means of egress unless the location, room, or space is designed for those materials. This charge specifically relates to the polyurethane furniture located on the fifth floor hallway. I want to be clear, the Toronto Fire Service has about 140 charges pending now across the city with a number of billing owners and occupiers. We're moving aggressively, I'll use the term, to make sure our city is safer, our buildings are safer for all occupants in all buildings in the city. Toronto Fire Service continues to work with Toronto Community Housing in assisting them in meeting their obligations under the Ontario Fire Code We'll be implementing the following strategy. In all 200 Toronto Fire Housing high rise and all of their 69 seniors buildings in 2016, we're going to be working with their staff on pre incident plans. So, a fire incident plan will be conducted and completed. We'll have public education sessions for both building supervisory staff and residents in each high rise building. We'll also be completing a fire safety inspection to be conducted in compliance with the requirements of the Ontario Fire Code. In 2013, we did a report called the POMAX Report to Council, talked about the need for additional resources to support inspection and public education. Again, a fire underwriter report supported that in the same year. And in 2015, our fire master plan. So we're working aggressively with the support of Council to hire 115 fire prevention and education staff, of which our Council supported additional 17 staff this year. So we have 87 of those staff in, will have in place by the end of the year. And the goal is to look at a higher level of service, to move from what we call a minimum service to a service level where all our buildings can be inspected in the commercial sector to make sure our people are safer through better education and through better code enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Fire Chief Sales. Now we call upon uh, the President and Chief Executive Officer for Toronto Community Housing, Greg Spear. Greg. Thank you very much. Uh, copies of my remarks will be available uh, um, after uh, I talk to you today. Uh, first, uh, let me begin by stating once again that Toronto Community Housing deeply regrets the loss of life and the injuries that happened as a result of the fire at 1315 Nielsen Road on February the 5th. Since the fire, we have been working hard to assist the tenants of the building and the families of those who passed away or were seriously injured. We continue to work to repair and restore the fifth floor of the building, which is where the fire occurred. The west wing repairs are completed and residents have returned home. The east wing will take six to eight weeks to repair, largely as a result of, of the order time for replacement suite doors, which were of necessity breached by firefighters in the line of duty during the fire. As Chief Sales has explained, Toronto Fire Services has laid one charge against Toronto Community Housing. We believe that we were in full compliance with the fire code and all applicable fire safety legislation at 1315 Nielsen Road at the time of the fire. Therefore, we will be contesting the charge. I would like to clarify that the combustible material that seems to be the basis for the charge was two upholstered armchairs, one new and one older, that were located in a large alcove off the fifth floor hallway. Two chairs had been located in the seating area, alcoves, of each floor for many years without incident. As the matter is now before the courts, we will make no further comment on the charge at this time. I would also like to clarify a point reported in the media over the last 24 hours. It was reported that there was peeling wallpaper in the hallways. I can confirm that the wallpaper was removed and hallways painted before the end of last year. 
If indeed, as reported by some media outlets, the cause of the fire is found to be careless smoking, then someone broke the law, and many people paid a terrible price. Where a TCHC tenant is found smoking in any common area, including hallways, they are told by staff to put it out. If they persist, we will proceed to terminate their tenancy. The official cause of the fire remains undetermined. We await the findings of the Ontario Fire Marshal and anticipate it will likely be several months before the results are released. Regardless, we are not standing still waiting for the Fire Marshal's report. Toronto Community Housing takes fire safety very seriously. We fully support the efforts by Toronto Fire Services to maintain the highest standards and systems in all residential buildings in the city. We continuously work with Toronto Fire Services to examine our current fire safety practices to ensure that all our buildings meet or exceed the fire code as written. This includes the codes as they pertain to the year a building was built, as well as retroactive requirements. If any improvements can be made, we take quick and effective action to make them. For example, in 2016, we are partnering with Toronto Fire Services for a fire safety week starting on June the 5th in our communities. The intent is educational for tenants and staff about fire safety. The week will include activities at 60 of our buildings, plus training workshops for 300 frontline staff. Toronto Community Housing's fire safety program is comprehensive. Matters related to fire safety are overseen by our dedicated life safety unit, which will be expanded in 2016. The life safety team works with Toronto Fire, the City of Toronto's Municipal Licensing and Standards, the Technical Standards and Safety Authority, the Electrical Safety Association, and others to ensure TCHC provides an effective response to any issues at all times. At every one of our buildings, we conduct monthly fire safety inspections. We inspect fire separation doors, fire exit doors, garbage chute hatches, fire hose cabinets, emergency lighting, emergency power systems, the elevator return, fire alarms, voice communications, and sprinkler systems. Our last such inspection of 1315 Nielsen Road was conducted on January 22, 2016, and all fire safety systems and equipment were found to be in working order. We conduct, we conduct weekly inspections of fire hose cabinets and infect, inspect fire doors daily to identify required repairs as a result of continuous vandalism to locking mechanisms. As a social housing landlord, we face particular challenges in this area. We repair an astounding 4,000 doors every month, most of them in common areas and mostly as a result of antisocial behavior by tenants or guests. In this area, we are strengthening our work with Toronto Fire Services as they will be assisting us with prosecutions where we are able to identify responsible properties. During annual unit inspections of all, all of our nearly 60,000 units, we test smoke alarms, carbon monoxide alarms, window closures, and door stops. We also monitor units for excessive clutter. Staff also inspect smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms during routine work order calls in tenant homes. We continually make capital improvements to upgrade our fire and life safety systems. For example, although the requirements for low rises differ, differ from those of high rises, we apply the most stringent high rise standard at all of our apartment buildings. Several fire safety systems at 1315 Nielsen Road exceed fire code requirements, such as positive pressure stairwells, heat detectors, fire alarm monitoring, and voice communication. In 2014, we spent $5.2 million on fire safety system improvements, and in 2015, that amount grew to $9 million. We also have in place a preventative maintenance program to maintain life safety systems in all of our buildings. This includes regular testing of all life safety components and systems and fire protection equipment by outside contractors, including thermographs of all life safety and electrical equipment. We respond 24-7 to fire safety issues, such as alarms or elevator entrapment and have protocols in place to ensure immediate response by dedicated on-call staff, contractors, or both. We deliver fire prevention and preparedness education to tenants focused on emergency procedures and preparedness, danger of false fire alarms, and understanding of the fire safety features of each building. There is also fire safety information in our tenant guide, which we have translated into 18 languages. We provide staff training for all life safety equipment on a demand basis, and as part of our onboarding program for all new employees. To conclude, let me say once again that although Toronto Community Housing is defending the charge, 
we remain steadfastly committed to working collaboratively with Toronto Fire Services to examine our fire safety practices at 1315 Nielsen Road and all of our buildings. We will continue to make whatever improvements may be needed to keep our residents safe. For example, as a precautionary measure, we recently removed furniture from anything or anywhere we thought could be considered common hallways of all of our buildings across the portfolio, most of which have been in place for many years. Once the Fire Marshal's Office has released its investigation report, we will revisit this to see if any furniture could be returned. Thank you. That concludes my remarks. The armchairs uh, have been in place in the alcoves on all floors for many years. Yes, they're, they're, the alcoves themselves are actually not, they're, they're, they're adjacent to the hallway, they're not part of the hallway ex exit area. Uh, to our knowledge, they were not. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a city bylaw. It's against the law to be smoking in common hallways or common areas and buildings, and we regularly uh, warn our residents about that fact. The, those, those chairs um, are fire rated. They've been in those, those alcoves for many, many years. But the, look, the, the uh, uh, fire marshal's investigation is still underway, and um, I, I'd really want to defer to uh, to their work until we see what the results are. I can't speak to the specific case, but I can tell you what I said earlier in my remarks, that when we see people smoking, we tell them to stop. If they do not stop, they are warned in writing, and then we pursue eviction. Uh, people are accountable for their own actions. If they, if they choose to smoke, it's very hard for us to control them, but we do our best. We would pursue eviction. Uh, we, are, we are bound by the landlord-tenant regulations, as, as is any other resident in the City of Toronto. Again, I can't speak to the specific case, but I can tell you that in all of our buildings, as I said before, when we see people smoking in our, in our hallways, in our common areas, we tell them to stop. And if they don't stop, we pursue eviction. We do it on a regular basis. I, I don't have specific statistics for you, but we, we do know that the, the regulation is there, and, uh, and we just, that's what we do. We just tell them to stop. People are, people are uh, allowed to smoke in their own units uh, currently. We don't have uh, smoke-free buildings across the portfolio, so they smoke in their units. But, when they're, but they are prohibited by city bylaw from smoking in common areas, including hallways. Um, we have not had pl we have not in instituted plans to prohibit smoking in our buildings at this time. There's th that's a really big issue that is has uh, important um, ramifications for many many tenants on either side of the issue. So that would be a very long process. Yes, I would be happy to look into it. Yes. Um, I, I don't see that we're ducking accountability at all in any way. Uh, what we're simply saying is that this specific charge that has been filed, we, we disagree with it, and so we will contest it. 
Um, but that does not mean that we are ignoring or stepping away at all from any of our obligations and responsibilities with respect to fire prevention, which is why we're working very closely with Chief Sales and his people. That's correct. As, as a precaution, yes. Uh, it, it's, in our view, it's not a matter of rectification. It's a matter of, of uh, an abundance of caution. We, we uh, went through the rest of the portfolio to make sure that there was nothing else in, possibly in question uh, for the, of that nature, and we removed them. Well, I, I mean, the, the concern has been, has been declared in the circumstances that we are in today, yes. So, again, out of an abundance of caution, we said, well, look, these, this, this furniture has been in place for many, many years in our buildings. Uh, maybe there is an issue. We don't know. So, out of, a, out of an abundance of caution, we removed them all. Well, again, back to the charge. We we will be defending the charge. We uh, we dispute the charge and uh, and and feel that we were in compliance with all fire code regulations at the time of the fire. Okay, we'll take two more questions. What is your what is your record on fire code violations? Has, has CCH been fined? How many times in the last year? Um, I I'm I can't speak to how many times. I I there has been notices of violation, but when we get notice of violation from the fire department, we react on them immediately, just as any other landlord in the city of Toronto does. When we when that problem is identified, we fix it. Each building in the city of Toronto has to meet a particular fire code and the building code when it was built. Uh, that building did meet the code as an apartment building, a five-story apartment building. And so today, the codes are different continually to change. In the fire service, we press for all buildings to be sprinklered. In cities like Vancouver, all buildings, including residential dwellings, are sprinklered. In this province, it's a provincial government that would determine which changes are made and when they're made. In 2014, there was a reactive change to what's called vulnerable uh, occupation, uh, occupancies, hospitals, nursing homes, retirement homes, where people are infirmed or under care. So there is a retrofit provision in those for sprinklers, but in apartment buildings and senior apartments, there isn't at this time. Any, any, any type of, of uh, additional fire safety measures like sprinklers are always advantageous. But again, when you have fires, there's also smoke. And smoke is toxic. In many cases, the injuries and the fatalities come from smoke, not necessarily flame spread. So it's also the smoke detectors and carbon monoxide systems to prevent the mitigation of smoke or the propagation of smoke is equally important. So there's a number of different aspects. With the support of council, there's three lines of defense in the province of Ontario. The first one is called education, second is code enforcement, and the third is the suppression, where the fire crews goes out and put out the fire. We're really focusing in our city on educating the public to be aware of how fires start, to be aware of their surroundings, to also to be aware of the need for carbon monoxide detectors, smoke detectors, and to be aware of their circumstance and to know how to remove themselves in case of an alarm. We're also fo focusing on the second, which is better code enforcement, looking at for all buildings, all occupancies, all 318,000 commercial buildings to meet the code. So we're focusing on that, and the goal would be to prevent and to reduce the impact of fires and fire spread. It's a provincial charge. It's going through the court. The court will ultimately determine what the offense is. The offense for corporations is up to $100,000 per offense. Even though three people are offended? It's a, it's, a, it's a provincial charge in this province. Do you consider this a slap on the wrist? Do you consider it as a taxpayer to pay for $100,000? 
th these all, whenever someone is injured or lose their life, it's absolutely catastrophic, not only for the members of the family, the victims, the surrounding. It's a challenge for our community. Our goal would be to try to find ways that we get compliance, ways we can get better safety requirements and legislation to prevent and eliminate fires in the future. There are two other fires where there have been charges laid as well. Uh, this before the courts, um, it was public information. I can give you just at a high level. Four forty four Lumsden Avenue. There was a critical injury in August of two thousand fifteen. There was one charge. There was also a critical injury in the same bill in October 2015. There was also a single charge. The charges in both were for suite and stairwell doors not closing and latching in both cases. There's also a fatal fire in December of 2015 at 275 Bleecker and a charge for suite and stairwell doors not closing and latching. But as the CEO has said it's been a challenge for them with continual renovations and repairs. That I am not sure of, I have no idea. I'd have to look into the specifics of those particular charges. I wasn't prepared to speak to those charges today. I really would need to uh, do a bit more research. But what I would say is that those are charges related to the doors. And as the chief mentioned, uh, uh, we have a particular challenge with our vulnerable resident population and their guests. And uh, uh, it, it, is, it is a formidable challenge that we repair 4,000 4, doors per month. Uh, it's hard to keep ahead of it because one door will get fixed one day and two days later it'll be broken. I think what you'll probably find with the charge is that we will, we will likely um, just, just be more robust at our, um, uh, at our um, repairs as, as much as we can. For example, the daily inspections of all of our doors. I, that would be, an, uh, I think, an opinion that you're looking for. Um, I would say no. We have a, our portfolio is over 50 million square feet. So with that larger portfolio, we are going to uh, experience these challenges. And our response is to go forward and be better every day and fix the problems when they happen. Uh, we do the very best that we can. There are other landlords in the city that face the same kind of challenges and, and also charges. Uh, we, we do the best we can with the resources that we have. frankly not quite sure how to, how to respond to that question. Um, we, we take it extremely seriously and we move forward from and learn lessons from every incident and get better every day. My people are accountable for their performance, and when, when, we, when we misstep, we own a problem and we fix it. Okay, we have time for one more question with uh, President Spear. Yes. Well, first, it's a city bylaw, and, 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 and bylaw enforcement is to the city. But what we do in our buildings is that when, when our staff find somebody who is smoking in these common areas or hallways, we, we, we warn the resident. And if it happens again, we warn the resident, and it's, it's at the discretion of the individual superintendent in the building, but if, it's, if, it's a, if it looks like it's somebody who is just not listening, then we, then we give them a warning in writing. And if they don't stop from there, then, then the written notice clearly says to them that we will pursue eviction. And then that starts an eviction process through the landlord-tenant board. Correct. Nobody 
Um, I'd have to look into that and get back to you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, in, the, in the audience today, I've got deputy chief uh, 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 and I've got our division chief, so deputy? Uh, uh, deputy Jessup is, is an expert in the field and he runs our fire prevention pub ed group. And so if there's any questions, I've also got James Stoop is the division chief of fire prevention that does the enforcement. He's also here. here. And these are the experts in the city that can assist if you've got some technical questions in regards to fire pre prevention, public education, or what the Toronto Fire Service is doing and where we hope to go. Thank you all for coming. Yes. That's a great question. So Chief Sales has already uh, committed and directed me and the Fire Prevention Division uh, to work collaboratively with uh, TCHC. Uh, we will be uh, implementing uh, the following procedures effective for 2016. First of all, uh, with our operations crews, they will be pre-incident planning uh, every uh, TCHC high-rise building and every TCHC seniors building, collecting information on how best to assist their emergency response. Uh, number two, uh, our public education section uh, will be uh, developing and working uh, and presenting uh, educational sessions to both supervisors, superintendents and staff and occupants at each of the high-rise buildings and each of the seniors' buildings. And finally, by the end of 2016, Toronto Fire Prevention staff will exercise their delegated provincial authority and conduct uh, full fire safety inspections at all 200 high-rise buildings and all 69 seniors' buildings. Uh, we were talking well over 15 years ago. Going back 15, 20 years, I don't know. We, we can't tell. So the last inspection we did do was in 2013, was a complaint inspection. Uh, it was for a fire alarm panel. We dealt with the panel. We did not conduct an inspection of the building. So I can't say what was in that building 15, 20 years ago. Uh, we, we uh, as I said, that was almost pre-amalgamation. So I don't have that answer for you. Uh, well, as the Chief indicated, uh, City Council uh, has recently unanimously uh, supported the increase in fire prevention staff uh, through the uh, POMAX report, the Fire Underwriters report, and the Master Fire Plan. Uh, fire inspections in Ontario are only required annually in vulnerable occupancies. Uh, certainly with the increase in staff that we have been provided, we will be uh, conducting more routine full inspections in these types of buildings. But the City of Toronto has over 300,000 buildings, and uh, we, have, uh, we have under 200 fire inspectors. So we have to comply with the provincial regulations first. We also have to comply with what they call complaint or request inspections under provincial law. And then uh, with the resources we have afterwards, uh, we certainly assign them based on uh, you know, complaints from the fire crews when they note violations, complaints from the public. So uh, you know, in, a, in a perfect world, Absolutely, but for a city this size, the fourth largest in North America, um, it's, uh, it's very difficult to get to each building every year. Well, certainly, as you heard Mr. Spear say, it is illegal under city bylaw, and certainly fire marshal statistics will confirm, as they do year after year, that careless smoking is one of the leading causes of fires. So uh, certainly smoking-related materials and careless smoking, not only in Toronto, but certainly in the rest of the province, has been one of the leading causes of fires in buildings uh, uh, over the last decade. Uh, I would not use the word loophole, no. I would say categorically the building was built according to the Ontario Building Code of the day and it met the Ontario Building Code. I can confirm that during our post-fire inspection their fire safety systems were in compliance 
with the requirements of the Ontario Fire Code. So it was not an issue of whether or not their systems worked or didn't work. As the Chief indicated before, the Building Code and the Fire Code are amended uh, over uh, time. And each, uh, each uh, amendment increases regulations and, and increases safety features. But it is really important to note that there is no loopholes. The building was built according to the Ontario Building Code, and the fire safety systems were maintained according to the Ontario Fire Code. Well, certainly, as the Chief said, in a perfect world, there would be sprinklers in all buildings. That is not feasible. Uh, that is not uh, uh, doable. Uh, you know, you have enormous costs. You have complications. You have construction issues. You have installation issues. Uh, but again, the important point is this. It met the building code of the day. It met the requirements of the fire code of the day for the fire protection systems. Uh, and uh, it, there's nothing else Toronto Fire could do. If the provincial government uh, uh, amends the Ontario Fire Code, our duty is, is to enforce it, but our duty is not to, uh, to amend regulation. Okay, thank you everyone.